Fala galera do Flow Games, prazer enorme estar aqui com vocês, eu sou o Mika e eu estou aqui durante a nossa cobertura em Los Angeles com duas pessoas muito importantes para que nós possamos falar sobre Star Wars Outlaws. Ao meu lado aqui direito eu tenho o Matias Carlson que é o diretor do jogo Game Director e desse lado aqui eu tenho o Navid Kavari, o is the Narrative Director, yes. é o diretor de narrativa e o diretor do jogo. Vamos conversar um pouquinho sobre Star Wars Outlaws que eu testei, a gente testou o Fênix também por tipo uma hora. Hora. Eu tenho muita coisa para perguntar, eu sei que nós não temos tanto tempo assim, então vamos direto ao ponto, tá? Então, tchuf, liga a chavinha pro inglês e vamos embora. So, thank you guys for being here with us. Thank you. For having the time to talk to us. Uh, I have a lot of things to ask. I played the game for one hour, the three sections, I completed all of them. So, first of all, story-wise, there is a lot to ask, you know? So, story-wise, uh, I don't know which one of you prefer to answer. We have a big cannon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little big. You go for it. So the, the lore of the Star Wars universe is huge. We know that the game is canon and it goes during a time in which Han Solo is being carbonite. So we have, we have to think about Boba Fett, we have to think about the other characters in this universe, episode 5 and 6. We know that the timeline of the Star Wars universe is very rich. So how it was to work with, with Disney, with the guys from the writers, the original artists behind the Star Wars universe to bring your own take to a whole new game? Yeah, I think... Um You know, it goes right back to our relationship with Lucasfilm Games. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was actually, you know, we were really, you know, kind of focused on this idea of the scoundrel archetype that excited us. But when we met with Lucasfilm and they talked about this uh, this period between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, I think we said yes as fast as possible and then tried to get back to our desks. Um, so, uh, episodes five and six. But yes, exactly. Yeah. Episodes yeah. five and six. And the rebellion is in... You know, it's on the run. The Empire's in full control of the galaxy. But the underworld is rising. And I think what really excited us is that, you know, we've kind of seen what the Jedis have been up to and during this period. We know that the rebellion, this upstart rebellion is trying to survive, but we hadn't seen a perspective on the ground. And I think the idea here is, you know, while, while there are all sorts of characters that you're going to run into. Um, you know, we've seen Lando now, we've, you know, got Kira, we've got Jabba the Hutt. Uh, Lucasfilm was so um, gracious and encouraging of us to, to play in that sandbox. But we were always looking for what is it new that we're bringing to the table. And I think really the idea of a character, a rookie scoundrel, going into the underworld during this period and not really caring about that broader conflict, that's just bringing another Other shade uh, between those two uh, chapters. Yeah, great, great to know. And Matias, you want to add something? I think that was beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, uh, from a gameplay perspective, I could see exploration. I could see action, melee action, uh, ranged action, all working in a great way, in my opinion. The challenge for you guys to mix that up, to mix exploration with the open world, the action, to bring a good pacing to the game. What were your first thoughts when you were thinking about Star Wars Outlaws gameplay-wise? Great question, lots to talk about. So I, I, <laughs> yeah. think, I think I'll, I'll categorize this in, in two buckets. So the, the first one is, who is this character? Mm -hmm. What's the fantasy? Mm -hmm. It's a scoundrel thief. What type of gameplay actions and verbs and situations mm -hmm. come from that that just feel right? So sneak, mm -hmm. shoot, escape, infiltrate, sabotage, steal, etc., etc. Right? Yeah. What do we give K ultimately you the player to make that become real? Mm -hmm. One of the first things was Nyx, her yes. little buddy, the right? companion, the yeah. companion yeah. who is so much more than her pet. It's her best friend, her partner mm -hmm. in crime, her family. It's cute. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we 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 agree. It's like your long finger, your long arm, your extension of yourself out into the world where. You could be hiding behind a cover, still to be detected, hopefully never detected maybe. And he can do things for you. He can distract enemies. He can attack them so that you can rush in and punch them out. He can fetch things. He can manipulate the environment around mm -hmm. you to your benefit, but also useful in combat. Mm -hmm. On your other hand, quite literally, you have your blaster. Mm -hmm. And this is a unique blaster 
new to Star Wars that has modules that switches capability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Meaning that we have a lot of richness in gunplay, even though it's one gun on, on the outside. And this will also continue to grow as you expand upon it and upgrade it in, throughout the game. So we could talk for a long time about that, but that's the second to second, right? How do we bring this fantasy to life? First ever Star Wars open world. What does that mean? Well, it means, first of all, that space is an equally natural and important part mm -hmm. as the planet's surface. So one of our, I think, greatest achievements that's also something we're very proud of is to offer this range, not of just experience and scale, but also travel made fun. Having your own ship to explore space, end up in dogfights, scavenge some asteroid belt, hyper jumping to a different location, seamlessly landing on the surface in your garage in the, in the ship, getting on your own speeder, driving out over the, the plains of Tushara, for example, yeah, yeah. going somewhere you otherwise couldn't, getting off and then being back on foot, maybe sneaking into a syndicate hideout, all seamlessly on your own accord when you want, not when the game is telling you to, is something that's really, really core to this game and I think just uh, something people will love. Yes. There is uh, one important thing about this game, which is the ship, the ship shooting, the gunplay. Well, I had a blast because uh, uh, I invert the Y-O axis. Everybody makes fun of me because of that. I can't do it. Yeah. yeah. I can't invert it. Yeah. No, you can't? I can't. Yeah. I mean, am I the only one who does it? <laughs> I don't think you, you're alone. It's you and like two, three more, but, uh, <laughs> but, but we have the setting for you. All right. Yeah. Thank you for that, yeah. But, yeah. but actually, uh, I was playing because of Star Fox. Yeah, I got used to play this way, Y-O axis, and I invert the Y-O axis in every game I play and all the options were there, so yeah, you don't have to worry about that. So, the ship, when you started to think about the ship, the gunplay in the airspace and the enemies coming around and the planets, oh my god, I could see a lot of things and just a bit, actually, because imagine the whole game, the final game, the final version with more planets, more enemies, so how it was to think about the challenges from a development perspective, a story perspective and a gameplay perspective to think about the airspace solely in the airspace. So forget about the solo and only in the airspace. How it was to develop a thing like that? It was really, it was really fun actually because mm -hmm. uh, I think the the challenge it, it, it posed to us mm -hmm. if we if we look at our goal is to make a game that that appeals to not just Star Wars fans for all mm -hmm. first of all but but players in general and playable by everyone we have to take the essence of what makes the fantasy of flying your own spaceship and being able to dogfight with it give it mm -hmm better cannons, mm -hmm. give it stronger missiles, package that in a control scheme mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. scary or complicated or gives you simulation sickness. And, and it, a, and it is accessible, uh, yeah. but at the same time challenging. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, you, you could answer the question yourself. Well, <laughs> and I'm so happy you say that because, because that's exactly what we're going for, mm -hmm. is, to, is, to, is to make it very approachable mm -hmm. and, and instantaneously fun. Sure. Uh, so that you, you connect with the fans and you connect with experience and you get that, that, that out of it, but without sacrificing the depth needed for it to be challenging and, and fun in, in the long run. A lot of work went into that and figuring out exactly what, what that means in terms of controls. And I think something that's actually maybe not obvious to everyone, but that was very, very conscious in, in Star Wars, the movies, mm -hmm. when they did space and space combat, was to treat it almost like uh, uh, aerial battles or naval battles from World War II, where there's, there's a horizon line and there's the up, up and there's the down, mm -hmm. and it gives you a really, really strong but almost invisible subconscious connection to what's in front of you and how to navigate it without getting lost in the 360 that is space, and that's something we also did uh, in the game. You can't imagine how much that opened things up story, mm -hmm. storytelling wise, right? The fact that we're able to follow through on that dream. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of uh, fans it's had. For you guys. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. You know, to be able to hop on your speeder, go across the plains, jump into your ship and blast off and maybe run into a dogfight. It opened up the possibility space for storytelling in a way that I don't think we could have done otherwise without without space as such a key ingredient. Nice, great. Uh, I have only a few questions left uh, about the uh, side activities 
the, the secondary uh, missions that players can dive into. What can you say about that? Anything you want to say, you can say right now, of course, without, without any spoilers, of course. Sure. No one wants it, <laughs> me neither. Uh, so what can you say about, uh, you know, the side stuff of Star Wars Outlaws? Sure. I mean, I think we always try to see Uh, Outlaws as a holistic package. So while there is a campaign, there is Kay's journey, this engine pushing you through the galaxy. There are characters that she's gonna meet along the way, curious personalities. That's what Star Wars, you know, these are opportunities for Kay to grow and develop as a character, but also in a gameplay sense. So, you know, she meets Quint, uh, or she she discovers her way to finding out this gunslinger out on the, on the Tatooine. Uh, she gets to develop her skills that way. And so I think we really tried to motivate the player not just to feel like they're, they're on this one linear path, but hey, actually, if you, if you stray off that and you try to find other uh, characters out in the world, you're going to be rewarded with an actual journey that's going to give you a story and give you a, a gameplay benefit. I think Navid put it beautifully, and uh, it's also the, the ever-present empire mm -hmm. and the syndicates and everything that that brings. It's central to the, the story we're telling and the adventure we're going in the campaign, but it's also a completely natural central part of the world where the, the ebb and flow of your reputation with the different syndicates is very much driven by the choices you make mm -hmm. uh, and the, the goals you want to pursue. And uh, if you break the Empire's rules, they'll come after you. Yeah. So I, th I, think, I think all of these things combined makes for a very rich experience where you can both be surprised and react and have fun that way but also pursue things with, with intent um, if it's an expert or something that a fa uh, serious syndicate has to offer or something you need to steal in an imperial base it's up to you people love to know this if you can tell of course any idea of the length of the game doing the main missions and the main missions and the side stuff i mean of course an average if you guys would shoot anything. I wish we could give you a number. <laughs> But I think the truthful answer is that it will vary a lot depending on uh, how you approach playing the game. But at the heart of it is this, this fantastic story campaign, which nice. is a truly full length single player action adventure that will take you through five planets Whoa. with space. Nice. And, uh, If you want to do everything, explore every nook and cranny, it will at least double, if not triple that. Well, all right, guys, one last question for you. Your Star Wars favorite movie. Name one. Empire Strikes Back. Oh, right. That was singular. Yeah. That was, it's mine too. Yeah, hey, there yeah. you go. Triple. Yeah, we didn't set it all together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah, Empire Strikes Back. It's our favorite. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, any special, any final message for our, our millions of Brazilian fans out there? Uh, we are from Flow Games, the biggest, one of the biggest podcasts in Brazil. If you have any special message for the millions of Brazilian fans watching you out there, now is the time. Just uh, hello, Brazil. And we cannot wait for you to experience Star Wars Outlaws. Yeah, uh, we're so excited that this is actually starting to be played uh, now by you and a few others that are here today and very soon august 30th all of you and uh, we couldn't be more excited for you to to come into this world that we've been living in for a few years now Nice. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you very much. É isso, então, galera. Muito legal aqui o nosso papo com o Matias, diretor do jogo, e o Navid, diretor de narrativa. Sigam com a gente na cobertura. Se descobriram qual que é o filme de Star Wars favorito deles, conta o seu aqui nos comentários e conta, claro, como é que tá seu hype para o Star Wars Outlaws. Beleza? Muito obrigado. Vamos seguir aqui nossa cobertura em Los Angeles. Eu sou o Mika. Valeu, galera. Fui. <música>